I mean, you know, with the W, you don't have that much time to prepare. I mean, you you have to get things done. How helpful is it that the number of veterans you have, obviously Diana and Brittany, but also Ka and, and Cloud, does that help being able to, you know, get started? Yeah, it's very helpful. It's very helpful. I'm super thankful that they're here. They've experienced things in this league that that I haven't seen and been through so many different situations. Uh, but our training camp was huge. The opportunity to go down to San Diego and and come together. Uh, I've never been a part of a destination training camp, but the practices were, were good, very energetic. But more importantly, it was the time that we got to spend together. You know, we've talked about a new group and a new culture and how we want to respect one another. And those times, those times are special for a group that needs to catch up and get to know each other quickly, not just for the players, but for the players and the staff and the staff and just everyone, um, you know, from our team dinners to uh, our rookie talent shows to uh, going to a baseball game together. You know, it's just those, those times we're going to remember that time when, when stuff gets tough at game 12 or game 20, the relationships that we've formed, the bond that we've made. Uh, we've got great people here, obviously very talented players sitting between two right now, but I've been just more impressed with the people and uh, we, we've got an opportunity to do something special here. Thank you. All right, we're gonna turn to Willie and then Teresa, Willie. Thank you, Ron. Uh, Willie Ramirez in Las Vegas. Hey, everybody. Um, I was just on the, the, the Mercury team media day, and I listened to everybody's sort of glowing remarks about Tosh arriving in Phoenix, um, extension of the coaching staff on the core, Cospo, Kylie, DTU as well. DTU have never been, you know, you've always been unapologetically you, right? And Tosh is the same way in terms of on and off the court, believes her activism. What's it like with two powerful personalities to have someone who I think sort of mirrors that powerful voice, um, not afraid to speak up, trash talk, and who's winning the trash talking battles through the first couple of weeks of training camp? Well, in my old age, I've become very quiet, so I'll give all the <laughs> believe that. Gosh, um, <laughs> no, but you know what? I, I don't necessarily know if it's um, a matter of um, being outspoken or being an activist. Um, I think it's a matter of her being a genuine, truthful person. Um, and over the years, I've been around, you know, a lot of players and coaches, media, <laughs> and everyone can smell a phony. And that is the one thing uh, Tosh is. It's, it's real. It's who she is. That passion she has for basketball translates into her life, into her friendships, into her relationships. Um, and, you know, after competing against her for nine years, there's a respect when someone brings it every single night, um, as competitors, we know that. And it's nice that she's in our locker room now. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Willie. We're going to turn to Teresa. Teresa, you'll be followed by Christos and then Nancy. Teresa. Diana, you, as much as you talk about uh, having a lot on your plate, the new faces and things like that, and it's a busy year with the Olympics, et cetera, my question is, how curious are you to see what the WNBA does, maybe its franchises, to try to seize the moment? There's a lot of eyeballs on women's basketball as a whole right now. Uh, do you want, How much of a leap could this league maybe take this year and if they do the right steps? Yeah, you know, there's always um, moments in life, especially for this league, where you feel like there's this momentum. We've had them in the past, and I think we've let the, the you know, it slip through through the cracks. But it just seems a little bit different this year, as far as like you said, the attention and the momentum. And uh, um, I think the one thing we've always done as players is brought that competitive spirit and fight. And uh, now it's their job to to carry it. All right, thanks. We're going to turn to Nance. Uh, I'm sorry, Christos. Hello, hope you're doing well. Uh, question for both Diana and Carl. What what gives you confidence looking at the roster and the work that you put in so far in the training camp? What gives you confidence that you can, that you can win the, trophy, the the championship this season? And also, how do you see the level of competition, especially this season? Um. To start, I think we have 
championship experience. Um, like D said, you know, once you you get a taste of that, uh, that that's all you're really chasing. Um, and I think that having that experience, you understand sacrificing a little bit of yourself for everyone. Uh, and I think when we 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 joke and we talk about uh, things that we've experienced and what we want as far as our culture and how we want to do things, and we're all on the same page. Um, as far as, like you said, we have great people, but uh, we want to win and we we have one goal. So I think that that's where my confidence lies. My confidence lies in in those conversations that we have at lunch uh, and the, the the jokes and the stuff that we we say to each other. But everything is super genuine. Um, and yeah, like I said, that's that's where my, my confidence lies. Yeah, obviously, if you look around the league, you see some very talented teams, um, you know, you know, when you talk about, you know, Vegas and what they've been able to do, New York, um, Connecticut, um, you know, I think when you look at our roster and Khan knows this and coach obviously has been around the block um, for a long time, um, you always look at a roster and you're like, well, you're missing this, you're missing that. But when I look at this roster, I look at all the things we do have that no one else has. And that makes me really happy. All right, thanks. We're going to turn to Nancy. Nancy, you're going to be followed by Christy and Summer. Nancy. Nancy, I'm USA Today Sports. Um, Diana, two questions. Um, one, your reaction to the W or Kathy announcing that you guys are going to get charters. And if you have heard any details about that, and you mentioned that, you know, the league has to carry this forward in a way that it maybe hasn't done in the past. What, how do you, how does the league do that? Or what would you like to see in addition to the charters? Yeah, I mean, the Chargers was um, definitely uh, pleasant news for us the other day. Uh, you know, that's been always a point of contention for us. And, you know, uh, as athletes, you always want the best opportunity to get to a city and, and be able to perform at a high level. And the travel hasn't always been easy, hasn't always been convenient. Um, so to finally see that be pushed through after so many years of of players in this league um, doing it in a way that, uh, for a long time was a hardship. Um, I'm happy for for this next generation to be able to to really enjoy that. And we have to give thanks to all the people that came before us, you know, who carried this league for a long, long time. Um, and as far as, you know, the WNBA, um, you know, I think society's tapped into a, a part of life that they want to see, they want to enjoy. And I think, um, you know, we've always talked about the the respect of, of our league and our players. Um, this is our profession. This is our livelihood. We take this serious. Um, and that to me has always been on the forefront of why this league um, is where it is today. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Christy. You're up. You're going to be followed by Summer and Jeff. Christy. Hello, everyone. Christy Winter Scott with Monumental Sports Network in DC. And this is for both players. I was going to touch on the charter twice, but I think I'm just going to tag that with um, DT and Ka. This is for you both. Uh, with the young players coming in uh, pro ready, what have you seen so far from the rookies in the preseason games so far? I don't watch preseason. <laughs> <laughs> What D said. <laughs> what D said. Okay. 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 Well, I'll follow up with something totally different. Pro ready to okay. be determined. <laughs> okay. Okay. I guess it would just let's keep it team wide then because you guys have, have been in camp. You've played yeah. a couple games. Okay. So uh, just with what you were saying, DT, about the chemistry and you all having things that other teams don't have. I remember Gino saying we have DT and you guys don't. Um, how important do you think that level of balance will be for your team to be inside strong and to be strong on the perimeter as well with depth on both positions there? Hey, hey look, at the end of the day, um, it's a team sport. You know, we can talk about individuals. We could take, talk about individual skill. But at the end of the day is how well can you play together as a team? And that's always been the team that's won, uh, you know, the title, um, the most cohesive the team that has the most shared cognition. And that's something we're trying to forge early in this season. We don't have, 
um, you know, the fortune of being together for a long time. But at the same time, that's uh, not our biggest problem. Um, we like each other. Like Ka said, we're all on the same page of what our goals are. And that happens every single day you step onto the court. It doesn't happen overnight. Like Coach said, there's going to be some ups, some downs. If we are all locked in on what we need to get done to be the best version of the Phoenix Mercury, um, I'm very confident that we're going to have a chance to, to do some special things this year. Thank you. All right, thanks, Chris. We're going to go to Summer, then Jeff. Summer. Hi, Diana. You just being around the game for a long time, what advice have you given to the newcomers? To, to enjoy it. Um, you know, you only get to play your rookie year once. You only get to be a rookie once. Um, you know, sometimes when you've been around for a long time, um, experience can be a heavy load because you know too much. Um, I can look back on my career and some of my fondest, fondest memories was when I didn't know what I was doing. So that's good. <laughs> All right, Jeff, you're up. Yeah, for Diana, after the game in Seattle, um, the socials were posting a video of you kind of chatting with Nika Mule and kind of joking with her about kind of getting after her uh, on the court. How much do you enjoy um, kind of welcoming a uh, UConn alum to the WNBA? Yeah, I've been a fan of Nika since she got to school. I mean, she plays with that that grit. Um, she has that Eastern Bloc mindset, which nothing is given to them. And uh I just love the way she works and she's going to have a hell of a career because she loves the game because she's selfless. Um, she plays for the team. Uh, and it's always nice to have a fellow Husky around. We've gone through the same experiences with coach. Um, so I I'm just happy for her. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Jo uh, I'm sorry. I'm going to go to DJ. DJ, you're up. Hey, this question is for Diana. Uh, I wanted to ask specifically with this rookie class, why do you think that they're able to garner a lot of attention? I mean, obviously you were amazing in your prime as well, but why do you think that this class, uh, there's a lot of attention around it coming mm -hmm. into it? Well, I mean, obviously I think social media has revolutionized um, life in a lot of ways in the way we get our media, our news, our sports coverage. Um, you know, things can spread like wildfire as we know pretty quickly and that can be good and bad. And I think, as far as women's sports, we've used that tool to really expand our audience, our fans across the world. And uh, uh, it's been amazing to see this rookie class really latch onto that and take it to new levels. And, uh, you know, it's helped our, you know, the WNBA, it's helped college basketball. Um, it's really been a treat to watch. Thank you. All right, Jordan. Jordan, go ahead. All right, lost Jordan. Brad, you're up. Yes, hi, ladies. Hi, Coach. Brad Lake from WBB Nation and WNBA Swish. Diana, this question is for do as you guys get ready for the game against the Sparks. Mm -hmm. Speak of what the, the chemistry is going to evolve from training camp and the first game and what you guys, and especially yourself are going to work on as mm -hmm. you ready for the opener against the aces next week yeah every single day is a chance for us to evolve as a team on on both ends and, and we're still trying to find you know the balance and how the the pieces fit together and all these are great opportunities for us um to find that and um you know that's what the season is it's about growing and evolving um as a team as an individual um, and every opportunity we get to to play a game will give us that chance, and uh, we're all looking forward to that. I thank you, Diana. No problem. All right, thanks. We have time for just a couple more. We're going to go to um, Nathan. Nathan, go ahead. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Ron. Uh, <clears throat> Kalia, uh, this is a question for you. Um, what's it been like for you uh, so far in your career being with talented players like Diana, and you got Brittany, and then uh, Natasha Cloud, and what have you learned so far from uh, those players? Uh, I think the most important thing I've learned is, you know, every day just like how to be the best pro, you know, um, and I don't take it for granted. Uh, you know, being in Chicago, I had Candace Parker. I was able to to learn, you know, how to continue to grow, you know, even after, you know, being a winner. So to come here 
uh, and I don't take it lightly. You know, I see D working out before practice. I'm with her every morning before uh, she has the freedom to like some days we do things different or it's things that I've never worked on before. So uh, I think it's just times like that that I just don't take it for granted. Um, and I'm just able to just soak up whatever it is for that day. Thank you. All right. Everybody, thank you. We need to wrap now. Uh, Nate, uh, Claire, Diana, thank you so much for your time. Good luck, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And to our media, stay with me one moment here. Just a reminder, in addition to today's session at 530 Eastern with Seattle's Noel Quinn, Jewel Lloyd, and Neka Agumake, we also have tomorrow an ESPN Zoom featuring LaChina Robinson and Rebecca Lobo. That's at 2 p.m. Eastern. 2 p.m. Eastern, LaChina Robinson, Rebecca Lobo from ESPN. Uh, for the information on that, you can look for an email that came on Tuesday from Sam Tager of the WNBA at 7.22 p.m. ET. So for the details on that, look for the email from Sam Tager. It came Tuesday at 7.22 p.m. ET. That's regarding ESPN tomorrow. See everybody 5.30 Eastern tonight. Recording.